Charlotte Bronte's letter to G.H. Lewis, written the 12th of January, 1848, at Haworth. Dear Sir, Mr. Williams did well on the whole to tell you I regretted not having sent the note of thanks I wrote, as I am thus afforded the opportunity of preparing the omission. I thank you then sincerely for your generous review, and it is with a sense of double content I express my gratitude, because I am now sure the tribute is not superfluous or obtrusive. You were not severe on Jane Eyre. You were very lenient. I am glad you told me my thoughts plainly in private. For in your public notice you touch on them so lightly. I should perhaps have passed them over thus indicated, with too little reflection. I mean to observe your warning about being careful how I undertake new works. My stock of materials is not abundant, but very slender. And besides, neither my experience, my acquirements, nor my powers are sufficiently varied to justify my ever becoming a frequent writer. I tell you thus, because your article in Fraser left on me an uneasy impression that you are disposed to think better of the author of Jane Eyre than that individual deserved. And I would rather you had a correct than a flattering opinion of me, even though I should never see you. If I ever do write another book, I think I will have nothing of what you call melodrama. I think so, but I am not sure. I think, too, I will endeavour to follow the counsel which shines out of Miss Austen's mild eyes, to finish more and be more subdued. But neither am I sure of that. When authors write best, or at least when they write most fluently, an influence seems to waken in them which becomes their master, which will have its own way, putting out of you all the hesped its own, dictating certain words and insisting on their being used, whether vehement or measured in their nature. New moulding characters giving unthought of turns to incidents, rejecting carefully elaborated old ideas and suddenly creating and adopting new ones. Is it not so? And should we try to counteract this influence? Can we indeed counteract it? I am glad that another work of yours will soon appear. Most curious shall I be to see whether you will write up to your own principles and work out your own theories. You did not do it altogether in Ranthorpe, at least not in the latter part. But the first portion was, I think, nearly without fault. Then it had a pious truth, significance in it, which gave the book sterling value. But to write so, one must have seen and known a great deal. And I have seen and known very little. Why do you like Miss Austen so very much? I am puzzled on that point. What induced you to say that you would rather have written Pride and Prejudice or Tom Jones than any of the Waverley novels? I had not seen Pride and Prejudice till I read that sentence of yours, and then I got the book and studied it. And what did I find? An accurate, daguerreotyped portrait of a commonplace face, a carefully fenced, Highly cultivated garden with neat borders and delicate flowers, but no glance of a bright, vivid physiognomy, no open country, no fresh air, no blue hill, no bonny beck. I should hardly like to live with her ladies and gentlemen in their elegant but confined houses. These observations will probably irritate you, but I shall run the risk. Now I can understand admiration of George Sand, for though I never saw any of her works which I admired throughout, even Consuelo, which is the best or the best I have read, appears to me to couple strange extravagance with wondrous excellence. Yet she has a grasp of mind which, if I cannot fully comprehend, I can very deeply respect. She is sagacious and profound. Miss Austen is only shrewd and observant. Am I wrong? Or were you hasty in what you said? If you have time, I should be glad to hear you further on this subject. If not, or if you think the question's frivolous, do not trouble yourself to reply. I am yours respectfully, C. Bell.